2020 primary election poll worker training. Election day is Tuesday, May 12th for 2020. Poll worker hours are 7 o'clock a.m. to 8.30 p.m. Polls open at 8 a.m. and will close at 8 o'clock p.m. All election workers have been mailed their assignments for the upcoming election. If you have been assigned as an inspector, a clerk, or a judge, you will need to report to your assigned polling site at 7 o'clock a.m. on Tuesday, May 12th. You will use the first hour to set up the polling site. Please be ready to receive voters and open the polling site by 8 o'clock a.m. Before Election Day, all election workers should notify their employer of their election duty or possible election duty, fulfill the election worker training requirement, and vote early if they wish to vote. Inspectors will contact the polling site at least one week before the election. Keep in mind that many churches are not staffed Mondays or Fridays. Make sure that the building you are going to be using will be open by 7 o'clock a.m. on Tuesday, May 12th. Also make sure that you know the procedure for closing the building at the end of the night. Polling site contact information was included with your assignment. Inspectors will also contact each team member within the week before the election. Inspectors, please notify the election office and if any of your team will not be available to work on election day. Election worker contact information was included with your assignment. If you need additional contact information, please contact Teresa at the election office. Inspectors will pick up ballots and election supplies from the election office warehouse on Monday, May 11th, between 8 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Inspectors will drive around to the back of the building at 501 Olson Drive. Enter Jersey's East parking lot and proceed to the very back of the second building. Our warehouse doors will be open. Keep in mind that delivery teams will be loading out until 9.15 a.m. If you arrive between, before 9.15 a.m., you may have to wait while delivery trucks are loaded. If you cannot pick up your ballots and supplies before 4.30 p.m., please contact the election office. Before election day, all election workers should notify their employers of their election duty or possible election duty. Nebraska law protects election workers. Your employer may not subject you to loss of pay, loss of vacation or sick time, discharge from employment, or any other form of penalty on account of absence. Please have your employer contact our office if your employer has any questions. If you have been assigned as a substitute poll worker, we will give you as much notice of assignment as possible. However, you may be called on election day. For anyone who has a conflict with your service on election day, please contact Teresa as soon as possible. Follow the instructions on the checklist in the red binder. Arrive at your assigned polling site at 7 a.m. Unload your inspector's vehicle, complete part one of the ballot certification form, organize ballots, sign payroll sheets and oaths, set up and test express vote, we have new equipment, set up voting booths and display signage and sample ballots. Prepare the sign-in table, inspect and lock empty ballot boxes, check for barriers, and mark additional early voters as directed by the district inspector. Judges will break the seals on the ballot box. Hold on to the seals. Open the large door of the ballot box and find the ballot certification form. It will be laying on top of the ballots. Do not remove ballots from the box yet. You will need to make sure that the seals you just took off the box are the same numbers listed on the ballot box certification form. If the numbers match, check yes, and two judges of opposite political parties will sign the first box on the ballot certification form. If the numbers do not match, stop and call the election office for further instruction. Place the broken red seals in the plastic bag that is taped to the inside cover of the red binder. Judges may now begin certifying the ballots received. Complete part one of the ballot certification form. The election office counted the ballots as the box was loaded. We are asking you to verify the number of ballots that you received. If there is a large discrepancy, 10 or more, please contact the election office. Organize the ballots so that you may obtain the correct ballot for each voter. If your precinct only has one ballot style, 
You may prefer to keep the ballots and piles on a table behind the check-in table. However, if your precinct has several, several ballot faces, you may want to create a filing box out of the ballot sleeve box. Judges will want to locate the box of ballot sleeves. Remove ballot sleeves from the box. Locate the ballot style dividers that are in the supply box. Take those out and use them in the plastic box that was carrying the ballot sleeves. Place the ballot dividers in the box and you now have a little filing cabinet. You may load the box as you certified the ballot counts. Notice the different ballot styles. In Precinct 1, they have nine different ballots. Republican 1, Republican 2, Democratic 1, Democratic 2, Libertarian 1, Libertarian 2, Nonpartisan 1, Nonpartisan 2, and Nonpartisan Republican. We will discuss issuing the proper ballots later in this present presentation. Here's a hint. Place the Nonpartisan Republican ballot divider behind the nonpartisan ballot divider. You will only use the nonpartisan Republican ballot if a nonpartisan voter requests it in conjunction with the normal nonpartisan ballot. Every election worker should sign in on the payroll sheet. You will find the sheet in the red binder. Every election worker shall sign the Before the Polls Open Oath on page 2 of the List of Voters book. Set up the voting booths. Place voting instruction signage in each booth and on each table used for voting. You will find the signage in the signage envelope. Make sure one of the voting booths is made ADA compliant by using the leg extenders. This voting booth is shorter than the other booths and the wide set legs will make it accessible for someone who uses a wheelchair. You may set up tabletop privacy screens if your polling site has extra tables and chairs for use. Please post all the signage that is in your signage envelope. Your checklist will designate where to place the signage. Set up your sign-in table. Clerk 1 will greet voters and look up names in the roster. Clerk 2 will assign a line number in the list of voters book for each voter and record the ballot issued. Judge 1 will pull the proper ballot for each voter. Judge 2 will issue verbal instructions to each voter and hand the ballot, a ballot sleeve, and a pen to each voter. Extra judges will receive voted ballots at the ballot box. After the site is prepared and before the polling site is open to the voters, all election workers need to inspect the empty ballot box. The inspector will lock the large door of the ballot box with a red seal. Record the red seal used on the red seal assignment slip. Election workers should check the outside of the polling site for barriers. Make sure that the entry into the polling site is free and clear of obstacles. The orange cone should be placed 200 feet from the entrance of the polling site. If the orange cone has not been placed, you may step out the 200 feet. The large metal vote here sign should be placed outside the entrance and allows voters access to the polling site. Contact your district inspector if your polling site has accessibility issues. Your district inspector may deliver to you an envelope with a list of voters who have voted early the day before the election. If your district inspector gives you this information, Clerk 1 will need to mark the roster for each voter on the list. One sticker that reads Early Voting Ballot Sent Vote Provisionally will be placed in Column 3. The other sticker with many X's on it will go in Column 6. You should place these stickers in the roster just like the computer would have printed the information. Check the voter ID number as you place the stickers. Some people share the same name.
set up the express vote and have it ready by 8 a.m. This piece of machinery is new and is the replacement for the previous auto mark. The express vote will be inside the soft sided black case that is about the size of a rectangular suitcase. Locate the power cords that will be stored in the side pocket of the express vote suitcase. Take the power cord and adapter out of the side pocket of the express vote suitcase. Plug them together if they are not already connected. Carefully remove the express vote from the soft case. Carefully place the machine face down so you can easily see the back of the machine. Insert the round plug into the back of the express boat as shown. The flat side of the plug will be at the top of the insert. Make sure the cord is lined up perfectly before you place the plug into the machine. The cord will be locked in place when it is inserted carefully. To remove the cord from the machine, you will have to pull back the protective sleeve of the cord. Lift the machine to a vertical position and pull out the kickstand. You will need to squeeze the two long pieces of metal towards each other as you pull the kickstand out. This will lock the kickstand in place. Plug the other end with a power cord into an electrical outlet. The express vote is now in the position that it will sit in to have a voter use it. There is a door on the left side of the express vote as you look at it from the voting screen. Use a key to unlock the door. Turn the power switch to on. It is a toggle switch that you have to press and hold and then it will spring back into this neutral position. Make sure the mode switch is set to voter. Once you have turned on the express vote and made sure the setting is to voter, you can again close the door and lock it with the key. Take the key and place it back in the plastic bag and put it in the express vote side pocket bag. Once you have turned on the machine, the express vote will power up. Follow the instructions on the screen. Be patient because it may take a few moments for the machine to completely power up. During that time, a, you may experience a black screen. This does not mean it isn't working. It just means it's taking a moment to get ready. If both power lights are lit, the machine is probably just powering up correctly. Once the load election screen comes up, you will be asked to enter the election code. Follow the instructions on the screen. The election code will be given to inspectors at supply pickup. The election code is case sensitive. Take your time entering the code. Let the machine acknowledge your entry before you make the next entry. Press accept when the code has been entered. After the election code is entered, your express vote will be ready for voting. You will need to run a test ballot on your express vote. You will find an express vote test kit in your supply box. The instructions for the test are printed on the outside of the envelope. The instructions for the test are printed on the outside of the envelope. The test ballot will be inside the envelope and will say Express Vote Test in red ink at the bottom of the ballot. You will notice a notch at the top right corner of the test ballot. You will notice a notch at the top right corner of the test ballot, which matches the notch on the insert slot on front of the Express Vote. To begin the test, insert the ballot into the slot. Instructions for voting will appear on the screen. Press Start Voting when you are ready to begin. Use the touchscreen to make your selections. There is a Braille option on the left side of your express vote. There is also a Sip and Puff option on the express vote. There are headphones in the carry case. 
This machine was designed to allow any voter to vote privately and independently. After you have made your voting selections, you will press Review Selections at the bottom right corner of the screen. The Express Vote will give you a summary of your selections. You will be given the choice to return to ballot to make changes or print ballot if the summary is correct. You may now print your test ballot. Press Print on the touchscreen. The Express Vote ballots will have barcodes and a printed record of your ballot. Write the word spoiled across the front and back of the test ballot. Place the spoiled express vote test ballot back in the express vote test kit. You may now place the test kit envelope back in your supply box. You are finished with it. Place the spoiled test ballot back in the express vote test kit envelope. You may place this envelope back in the supply box now as you are finished with it. If your machine did not print correctly, call your district inspector for assistance. Express vote paper jams are rare, but if you have a paper jam, there are a couple of steps to take. Once the panel is open, you will see the ballot. It will probably look like this. Now, use the key to open the door on the right side of the express vote. Use the roller to manually eject the ballot. You will roll the roller with your fingers. Do not pull on the paper. Let the roller eject the ballot. After you have ejected the jammed ballot, you may close and lock the front panel and side door. Place the key back in the plastic bag and put it back in the side pocket of the express vote case. You may call your district inspector if you have any difficulty. Please note that we have to ask that you do not use any antibacterial wipes or chemicals to clean the screen of the express vote. Using these types of products to clean the screen may result in the machine having to be recalibrated. You may offer a voter gloves or they can use a touching utensil if they would like to do so. Please open the polls at 8 a.m. While the polls are open, the inspector will assign duties, assign breaks, cover positions, assist provisional voters, and be the media contact. Clerks will check voters in, collect voter signatures, and assign line numbers. Judges will issue and receive ballots and oversee the express vote. Clerk 1 will manage the roster and keep an accurate roster. They must ask each voter, what is your name? And ask each voter, where do you live? The clerk captures the signature of each voter. No signature stamps are allowed. The clerk records the line number of each voter and tells Clerk 2 the ballot style of each voter. It is important for Clerk 1 to remember that voters must vote at the precinct determined by the voter's residence address. If the voter is not listed in your roster or the residence address is not current, a phone call must be made to the election office. Additional paperwork, possibly provisional, will be required before voting or the voter will vote at a different polling site. Phone bank number slips are included in your supply box. Voters who have not already called the phone bank will need to do so. If the voter has already called the phone bank and the voter is not listed properly in your roster, have your inspector handle this voter. The inspector will call the election office number listed on the first page of the red binder to obtain correct ballot style and instructions for this particular voter. Every precinct will have a total of three roster books in the supply books. All precincts will have a total of three roster books. They will each have 
two roster books listed A through K and L through Z, and we'll additionally have a provisional roster. This is an example of what your roster books will look like. All precincts will have a provisional roster. This roster will be used for every provisional voter who votes at your precinct. This book will have blank lines that you will use to enter provisional voter information. The book does not necessarily need to be kept by Clerk 1. It can be held by the inspector. This will keep the lines moving of voters who are properly registered. You may pull the provisional voters out of line and let the inspector process them. Don't forget to assign provisional voters a line number and get their signature. Clerk 1 will obtain and enter information left to right. Clerk 1 will ask the voter, what is your name? And will look up the voter in the roster column 1. Clerk 1 will then ask the voter, where do you live? Do not ask the voter if they live at the address in the roster. We need the voter to tell us where they live. The voter's registered address will be found in column 2. After the voter has verbally confirmed their address, Clerk 1 will place their initials in column 2 next to the address. Clerk 1 will look in column 3 for any notes that may direct the clerk to do get additional information from the voter. Clerk 1 will then ask Clerk 2 the line number that will be assigned to that voter and Clerk 1 will write it in column 5. The voter will sign their name in column 6. And again, no signature stamps are allowed. Clerk 1 will tell Clerk 2 the party and ballot style for this voter. This information will be found in column 7. Pay attention to any notes in column 3. There are three messages that may appear. Early voting ballot already sent, vote provisionally. Second message may read address confirmation required. The third message that you might see in column three is need ID to vote. This simply means that when the person originally registered, they were not able to prove their residence. All other voters do not need to show an ID to vote. Early voting ballot sent vote provisionally is self-explanatory. This voter has been marked as an early voter. If this voter wishes to vote at the polling site, they will be a provisional voter. Extra paperwork will be required. The voted ballot will be placed inside an envelope before being cast in the ballot box. Provisional voters will sign in the provisional roster. Do not accept any early ballots at the polling site. The voter has until 8 p.m. to return them early to the election office or a ballot drop box. The ballot must be returned in the envelope we provided. If the voter does not wish to return their early ballot, they may vote a provisional ballot at the polling site. This shows an example of what it would look like if in column three, the voter already asked for an early ballot but wanted to vote at the election site. Because this voter had already been sent a ballot, you will notice that in the signature line, everything has been X'd out, not allowing her to sign. This is to make sure that anyone who votes provisionally that has asked for a ballot previously will sign in the provisional book. This slide shows exactly how it will look when Carrie Payne signs in the provisional voting book. Another note you may see in column three is address confirmation required. These voters have been flagged in our system as possibly not living at the address that they are registered. Do not ask the voter for ID or proof of address. If the voter states the address listed in the roster, the voter has just verbally confirmed the address. Let the voter vote a normal ballot and sign the roster. If the voter states a different address from what is listed, hand the voter a phone bank slip 
and the voter needs to call the number to find out what their correct precinct is. If the voter says the address in the roster, have the voter initial by the address. Clerk 1 will also initial. Clerk 1 will record the line number in column 5. The voter will sign in column six, and again, no signature stamp. Clerk one will then tell the ballot style and party to clerk two. Ballot options for this primary election. Nebraska has a closed primary. This means that voters will receive the ballot of their political party affiliation. Republicans will receive the Republican ballot. Democrats will receive the Democratic ballot. Libertarians will receive the Libertarian ballot. The Democratic and Libertarian parties have opened their primary to allow nonpartisan voters to vote their ballots. So, nonpartisan voters will have four options for voting. The four options nonpartisan voters will have is to vote the nonpartisan ballot only, a full Democratic ballot, a full libertarian ballot, or a nonpartisan ballot along with a nonpartisan Republican congressional ballot. The chart shown makes it very simple to understand how the ballots can be dispensed to a nonpartisan voter. We will have copies of these full color signs for each polling site to make it easy to explain to a nonpartisan voter the ballot options that they have. The last note you might see printed in column three is need ID to vote. These are the only voters who you will ask for ID at the polling site. There are only 33 voters in Sarpy County at this time that fall into this category and their names will be highlighted in blue in the roster. If the voter cannot provide ID, the voter will be a provisional voter and be entered into the provisional voter roster. The need ID to vote voters must show ID because they registered by mail for the first time in our state and they did not provide the extra documentation required. Acceptable forms of ID include a photographic ID, which is not expired and shows the current residence address listed in the roster. Or they may show a copy of a utility bill, a bank statement, a government paycheck, or other government documentation, which is dated within the 60 days immediately prior to the date of presentation, and which shows the same name and address as shown on the roster. Mail and other pieces, such as a paper from the zoo, a membership at a museum, or things that are not government confirmed do not qualify as ID at the voting polls. This is an example of what the page will look like if it says need ID to vote in column three. This shows where the clerk will sign next to the person's address confirming that they showed ID. The clerk will indicate in column three what form of ID was presented. Clerk one will record the line number in column five. The voter will then sign in column six. No signature stamps allowed. Clerk one will tell the ballot style and party to clerk two. Clerk one may make simple name or address changes at the polling site. The voter must already be listed in the roster. If the change is an address change, the new address must be valid for that same precinct. There are voter registration applications in the red binder. Place completed voter registration applications in the back pocket of the red binder. When a voter is changing their registration at the polling site, an inspector or clerk will complete the left side of the form. If the voter does not meet one of the four reasons for completing the form, please call the election office. A name change does not require a call to the office. Address changes will require a phone call to the election office. You will need to confirm that the voter who is listed in your roster at a different address 
still resides within your precinct. Election staff will confirm ballot style for the voter. Clerk 1 will make a note in column 3, Address Change Within Precinct. Clerk 1 will ask Clerk 2 for the line number and then Clerk 1 will record it in column 5. The voter will sign in column 6. No signature stamps allowed. Clerk 1 will tell Clerk 2 the correct ballot style and party affiliation. Challenge Oath. A voter may be challenged as unqualified by any election worker or registered voters as to citizenship, age, or residency. If the voter completes the challenge oath, the voter votes a regular ballot. If the voter refuses to complete the challenge oath, the voter shall vote a provisional ballot. Please note this is very rare. Place any completed challenge oath in the back pocket of the red binder. You would write the word challenged in column three of the roster for a challenged voter. Then again, clerk one will ask clerk two for the line number that should be recorded in column five. The voter will sign in column six, and yes, you guessed it, still no signature stamps allowed. Clerk one will tell the ballot style and political party affiliation to clerk two. One thing we always ask is to do this as quietly as you can. There are some voters who do not want their political affiliations to be known by everyone in the election line. If a voter signs in the roster, but does not vote at the precinct, cross out the signature in the roster. Clerk 1 will count and record the number of signatures at the end of the day. This is rare, but it does happen. Clerk 2 is the manager of the list of voters book. Clerk 2 is responsible for printing each voter's name in the book and is the one that assigns the line number to each voter that is put into the roster by Clerk 1. Clerk 2 also marks the appropriate column in the list for each voter as it relates to the type of ballot they were given. Each voter is marked in one column, Republican, Democratic, Libertarian, Nonpartisan, or one of the other choices for the nonpartisan ballot options. Clerk 2 will tell Clerk 1 the line number of each voter. This is what the list of voters book will look like. This is where the name will be recorded. This is how the ballot is accounted for. This shows the second voter at the polling location for that day. Clerk 2 is responsible for adding the notes along to the voters' names if anything was done from column 3 in the roster. If a voter is listed in the list of voters book, but does not vote at the precinct, cross out the name in the list of voters book. This does not happen often, but once in a while, someone will be issued a ballot at the polling location, and they may walk out and not put it in the ballot box, or they may just decide that they no longer want to vote. It is rare, but it does happen. Judges issue and receive ballots. Judges will issue and receive ballots. Clerk 2 will tell the judge the proper ballot for the voter. Remember, ballot style is determined by residence address. 
Some precincts will have one ballot style. Some precincts will have more than one ballot style. Precincts will have a party ballot for each ballot style. So each precinct will have at least four different ballots. Precincts will also have nonpartisan Republican ballots for their precinct. It is very important that the voter receives the correct ballot. If you notice that a voter seems confused or not sure as you hand them a ballot, take the time to communicate with them before having them go to the voting booth. Just so you know, Sarpy County has 426 different ballots for this election. This is due to all the different precinct splits. We will send your precinct the correct ballots that are appropriate for your precinct. When selecting the proper ballot for the voter, remember, political party will be listed at the top of the ballot. Ballot style will be listed at the bottom right column. Two judges will need to initial every ballot that is issued. Initials verify that there are no other marks on this ballot. Please use red ink for the sets of initials. There are red pens in your supply bag. If a voter will be using the express vote, they will receive a piece of express vote paper. It is narrow thermal paper and the only printing on it is the initial box on the back of the paper. An election official will escort the voter to the express vote, and the election official will choose the proper ballot on the touchscreen before the voter makes their selections. A judge will issue verbal instructions to each voter. These are the same instructions that will be taped to the inside of every voting booth. Hand the voter a ballot sleeve, ballot, and pen. It may be helpful to demonstrate how to load the voted ballot in the ballot sleeve when done. You will want the voter to make sure the initials are facing up at the open end of the plastic ballot sleeve when they bring the voted ballot to the ballot box. Make sure ballots are faced correctly. Only the voter may remove and replace a ballot in the ballot sleeve. Before the ballot is deposited in the ballot box, the judge will make sure that the ballot has been placed in the sleeve correctly. Only the voter may reposition the ballot if it is not loaded correctly. Judges will look at the bottom edge of the voted ballot or ballots in the sleeve. They will make sure that the ballot style is for the correct precinct. The ballot style will have your precinct number incorporated on it. If there are two pieces of ballot paper in the sleeve, Make sure that one ballot has one of your styles on it, your precinct number and split, and that the other ballot would say either 900 or 901. 900 and 901 will be the numbers you see for the nonpartisan Republican ballot. If a voter has a ballot with 900 or 901 on it, they will always have a second piece of ballot paper, the regular nonpartisan ballot. Judges will also look for two sets of election worker initials in red ink at the bottom middle column of each ballot. The judge needs to ask each voter, are you finished voting? It is very important that every judge at the ballot box ask each voter, are you finished voting? Before the judge places the ballot in the ballot box. If the voter has any questions, stop. Do not place the ballot in the ballot box until the voters' questions have been answered with confidence. Call the election office if you are uncertain as to how to answer the voter. The judge will deposit voted ballots in the ballot box, and then they will offer the voter an I voted sticker. Every voter who signs in the roster shall have their ballot deposited in the ballot box. Number of signatures in the roster should equal the number of ballots in the ballot box. A voter may have up to four replacement ballots. The voter would write spoiled across the front and back of a spoiled ballot. All spoiled ballots would be placed in the spoiled ballot envelope. If a ballot is deposited in the ballot box that should have been spoiled, the ballot does not have initials from the precinct poll workers, then the ballot shall be rejected. 
rejected ballots if a ballot is brought to be deposited in the ballot box and the ballot does not have initials from the precinct poll workers, that ballot shall be rejected. Election officials will write the words rejected, not properly identified, across the front and back of the ballot. The rejected ballot shall be placed in the rejected ballot envelope. A new ballot shall be issued to the voter. Please remember that you cannot accept early ballots at the polling site for any reason. These ballots were issued with specific instructions. Voters have until 8 o'clock p.m. on Election Day to return the ballots to the election office or a ballot drop box. If the voter does not have time to return the early ballot as directed, the voter may vote a provisional ballot at their proper polling place. Provisional voting is a procedure to protect the ballot. There are several reasons a voter may be required to vote a provisional ballot. They may be marked in the book as an early voter. Perhaps they did not provide the ID required. Maybe the voter lives in an address within the precinct, but the voter is not listed in the roster. Also, perhaps a voter requests a different ballot than what is listed in the roster. These are all reasons that someone might vote provisionally. The provisional voter will have some paperwork to complete before voting. Once they've completed the paperwork and they are given a ballot to vote, they will return the ballot to the judge and the provisional ballot will be kept separate from the voted ballots until the election office can research the validity and make sure it is all complete. When there is the need for a provisional ballot, the clerk will notify the inspector at the polling place. The inspector will pull the provisional voter out of line and the inspector will complete section one of a white provisional envelope. The inspector gives the voter the white provisional envelope and the voter will need to complete section two. If the voter has moved, the voter will also need to make a phone call to get precinct information. When the voter has completed section two, the inspector will complete section three. The inspector will enter the provisional voter information in the provisional roster. The voter will sign in column six. The inspector will slip the voter in line to receive a line number from clerk two. Clerk two will add the voter to the list of voters book. Judges will pull the proper ballot for the provisional voter and initial the ballot. Judges will instruct the voter how to mark the ballot and judges will instruct the voter to bring the completed paperwork and ballot back to the judge at the ballot box. Do not issue a sleeve to provisional voters. They will use the white envelope as a sleeve. After voting, the voter will return the completed paperwork and voted ballot back to the judge at the ballot box. The judge will make sure the completed voter registration form is in the clear pocket on the outside of the back of the white provisional envelope and that there are three sections completed on the front of the white provisional envelope. Judge will make sure that the voted ballot is in the provisional envelope. Have the voter seal the envelope. The judge will deposit the completed sealed provisional envelope into the ballot box and the judge will offer the voter an I voted sticker. The inspector instructs the voter to keep the green piece of paper if he or she wishes to know if the provisional ballot was accepted or rejected. The green sheet of paper is inside the white envelope that they will be filling out and has a pin number that they will create where they can later check on the Secretary of State's website. On election day, every precinct will have a midday pickup of ballots voted so far by 2 p.m. This allows the election office to have numbers ready for reporting by 8 o'clock. Follow the checklist in the red binder. 
Teams will begin picking up ballot boxes around 2 o'clock p.m. Each team will have seven to eight polling sites to visit. During midday pickup, Clerk 2 will draw a line in the list of voters book indicating the voters whose ballots are included in the midday pickup. When the last ballot has been placed in the ballot box at the 2 p.m. pickup, affix a red seal on the small door of the ballot box to lock the box. Write the time that the ballot was locked on the red seal assignment slip. Ready the empty ballot box delivered by the early ballot pickup team for voting. Record the red seal used. You can resume processing voters. The following slides will tell you some of the additional information you need to know when working as a poll worker. For instance, every voter shall have the opportunity to cast a ballot privately and independently. Resources are available in your supply box for any voter that may need a little extra help. We have magnifying glasses, signature guides, sign language guides, paper and pencil to write messages back and forth. Please turn at least one of your voting booths into an ADA compliant booth with leg extenders to make them accessible to anyone who may be using a wheelchair. Additionally, if someone needs help in the voting booth, one other person or two poll workers may assist a voter in the polling booth. We also have the express votes available for anyone that chooses to use that to have their assistance. Disability etiquette. Always remember to ask before you help. Do not make assumptions that someone needs help. Be sensitive about physical contact. Some people with disabilities depend on their arms for balance. Avoid touching their wheelchair, scooter, or cane. We just remember to respect personal space. And think before you speak. Speak directly to the person with the disability, not to the companion or aide. And always please remember the golden rule of being a poll worker. Treat every voter the same with kindness and respect. Curbside voting is provided for in state statute. Curbside voting is something that we use in extreme situations where a voter simply cannot leave their vehicle to come in and vote. To make this process work, the entire polling place must be stopped and voters will wait in line while this happens. Two election poll workers of different political parties take the roster, the list of voting books, a ballot sleeve, a marking device, and a ballot to the voter at the curbside. They must be within one block of the polling site. While this is rare and we do prefer that it is used only in extreme situations, any voter that requires this service must not be denied. In the event that a voter is assisted by anyone who works at the polls, you must document this event. You must document the assisted voter and assistance on page three of the list of voters book. An official will indicate in column three of the roster, assistance rendered. A voting official will record the line number from the list of voters book in column five of the roster. The voter will sign in column six. And again, no signature stamps are allowed. An official will indicate assistance rendered in the list of voters book. On election day, after the polls close, there are certain procedures that need to be followed. Follow the checklist in the red binder. Any person in the polling place or in line at 8 o'clock p.m. shall be allowed to vote. When the last ballot has been placed in the ballot box, affix a red seal to lock the box and record the seal used. Paperwork that must be completed. Clerk 1 will complete the cover of the roster. Clerk 2 will complete the cover of the list of voters book. Judges will complete the unused ballot form, the spoiled ballot form, the rejected ballot form, and the ballot certification form. Everyone will sign the oath on page 2 of the list of voters book and the payroll sheet. 
Clerk 1 will count signatures on each page of the roster. Clerk 1 will then fill in the number of total signatures on the cover of the roster. Clerk 2 will total the columns on each page of the list of voters book. Clerk 2 will complete the information on the cover of the list of the voters book. The express vote number is the number on the side of the black express vote case. Judges will count spoiled ballots and complete the spoiled ballot form. Any ballot that has a mark on it and the ballot is not intended for counting shall be spoiled. Initials are marks. Judges will count unused ballots and complete the unused ballot form. Judges will also count rejected ballots and complete the rejected ballot form. This is a spoiled ballot form. Place the spoiled ballot form in its spot in the red binder. Place the spoiled ballot envelope in the supply box. This is what a rejected ballot form looks like. Complete this and then place the completed rejected ballot form in its spot in the red binder. Place the rejected ballot envelopes in the supply box. This is what the unused ballot form will look like. Place the unused ballot form in its spot in the red binder. Place all unused ballots in the canvas sack. Secure the sack with a metal seal. Judges will complete part two of the ballot certification form. We'll place the completed ballot certification form in its spot in the red binder. All poll workers were helped to take down signage. We reuse some of the signage, so please be careful. You will help pack up supplies and help take down express votes. Please bring this back to the warehouse on election night. You will leave orange cones at the site outside of the building by the front door. You will leave voting booths at the site, packed up inside the building. Please leave metal signs at the site, packed up in a brown box inside with the booths. The next day, county workers will come to collect all materials. All poll workers will help load the inspector's vehicle. They will help load the express vote, the supply box, the box of ballot sleeves, box of privacy screens, the black tube with federal poster, unused ballot sack, and the ballot box. The inspector will deliver the voted ballots and supplies back to the election office. They will drive along the east side of Jersey's, stop at the last door on the east side of the building, and unload the ballot box. They will continue around to the back of the building to unload remaining supplies. You will not get out of your vehicle. Keep your vehicle parallel to the building to keep the line moving. Additional information regarding safety, electioneering, casual conversation, materials in the voting booth, cell phone use, exit polling, media, and the red binder. Safety. Practice good hygiene. Wash hands, wash hands, wash your hands. Cover your coughs and wash your hands. Wipe down ballot sleeves and pens as needed. Practice safe distancing as much as possible. Always know where the emergency exits are located. If you must vacate and you are able, Clerk 1, take the roster. Clerk 2, take the list of voters book. And judges, take the ballot box. Electioneering. Electioneering, simply put, is the process of trying to influence an election through something as simple as wearing a t-shirt for a certain political party, or perhaps actively campaigning outside of the polling spot for a certain candidate. Electioneering is not allowed within 200 feet of the polling site. A copy of the current Nebraska statute is included in the red binder. Mm -hmm. Casual conversation at the polling sites. When you are working as a poll worker, you are representing the Sarpy County Election Office. And much like the rules that we are subject to, on election day, we must avoid topics that may be sensitive. Those include politics, religion, voter ID, etc. Perhaps, for instance, a voter would come up and try to engage you in the merits or the problems with implementing voter ID. While you may have an opinion on that one way or another, 
We are not to discuss this with any voter in any way. We must treat every voter the same and kindly and with respect. Materials in the voting booth. Voters are allowed to use notes. Some voters may use their phones, tablets, etc. That's okay. Just make sure you periodically inspect the empty voting areas and remove any political material left behind. Cell phone use. Voters are allowed to use cell phones while at the polling place. We do ask that they silence their phones out of respect for other voters. Poll workers may use their phones, just make sure the voters are priority. We do ask that you keep your cell phones on and face up at the polling site. If we need to reach you, that is the only way to get a hold of you. The number that will show up on caller ID will likely say 402-593-2100. All calls going out of the courthouse go through a trunk line and you will not see the actual number of who is calling you. Please answer your phone if it looks like we are trying to get a hold of you. Exit polling. We will let you know if we are aware of any exit polling activities to be conducted at your polling site. Additional instruction will be given to inspectors at Supply Pickup if you have scheduled exit polling coming to your site. Working with the media. All media inquiries at the polling sites must be directed to the inspectors, who will then direct media to Commissioner Andal. You may tell the media how many voters have voted that day, but do not tell them who has or who has not voted. As you can imagine, working with the media, especially in regard to elections, is a delicate matter, and we always want to represent ourselves in the best way possible. To do so, it is best to have Commissioner Andal take care of all of those issues and represent the Election Commission for Sarpy County. In your red binder, you will find an emergency contact number sheet, all of the seals needed for the day, a map for estimate only to try to determine if someone is at the right precinct, early voting drop box locations, a payroll sheet, polling site contact information, election team with in case of emergency sheets, spoiled ballot forms, rejected ballot forms, unused ballot forms, and ballot certification forms. Your red binder will also contain checklists such as opening, midday pickup, and closing. They will have name and address change forms within precinct. They will have name and address change forms for within precinct voter registration in Spanish, provisional voting guide, a challenge oath, PowerPoint, communicating with voters who are deaf or hard of hearing, ACLU poll worker tips, Disability Rights Nebraska polling place survey, blank paper for notes to election office, a list of polling sites, both alpha and numerical, and need ID cheat sheet for clerk one to keep by them. You have reached the end of your online training. We want to thank you for being a part of the coming election. We know that times are different this year, and we appreciate the fact that you're willing to take your online training to make sure you're certified. We look forward to working with you on election day and truly appreciate your dedication to this process and making sure that the election will go on as planned. 